Hello everybody. Let's do a little shading project. It's going to be quick and simple and I'm going to show you how to use one of my favorite shading techniques. So here we go. And if you are new to the Power Crafters channel, this is where we talk about all things wood burning and I try to upload a new video every week. So if that sounds like your jam, subscribe to the channel. It's a great way to support me so I can keep making videos like this. And if you want more exclusive content, you can join me over on CF Fans. I'll put a link below for that. I load new content every week and you load new templates and exclusive tips and tutorials on wood burning. Uh, so check that out below. All right, you guys. So a while back, I did a live here on YouTube where I showed you how to shade these petals. Where's that template? Here it is. Here's the flower. And, you know, being alive, I can't really do a full project because projects like this, um, all this detailed shading take hours and hours and hours. And I really don't think anybody's going to spend, you know, six hours with me here on YouTube. So I just kind of show you the techniques and live and then move on. But I really wanted to show you how I finished this. So I am going to finish the rest of this here and walk you through how I do each one of these little shading petals in a much more efficient, easy to consume version of a video. So <laughs> let's just, let's just get started. And I want to give a quick shout out to Jeannie Stevens for joining me on CF Fans. Jeannie, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. Okay, as we go through this video, there are three key points to remember. First, we are going to use a continual circular motion to shade the piece. And what that's going to do is keep our tip moving constantly. It's not going to sit in one place and over scorch or over burn, you know, a pin mark tip mark into the wood we're going to keep it at a continual steady pace so that we can build to the shade that we want number two is using a low heat so by using a lower heat we can build up to the shade that we want particularly for the lighter areas so when we start going through the shading stuff i'm going to show you how i burn a dark area which is on a higher heat but when we start getting into the shading details and adding gradients from dark to light. We're actually going to turn the heat down. Um, I'm on my Cole and Super Pro 2 here and I like to turn my heat down to a 1 or a 2 and just kind of use that circular motion over and over and over in the same spot and just keep overlapping until I can build up to the shade that I want. It's much easier to control and get the gradients and the effects of shading and that sort of realistic effect by keeping a low heat. And tip number three is going to be speed variability. The faster you go, the lighter your shade will be. The slower you go, the darker and deeper your shade will be. Sometimes it's not always about adjusting heat. Um, of course, if you're going to be burning really dark or really light, it's easier to adjust the heat to get you to the tone that you want quicker. But a lot of shade shades kind of live in that middle area. And by keeping it low and just adjusting your speed, it's going to get you a lot more control and you're going to have a much more realistic effect overall in your wood burning. So that's what today's video is all about, combining these three techniques to, to gain control of your shading and help you achieve a much more realistic effect. Okay, for this next little petal, I'm gonna choose one that's got a really good variability of shade. You can see in the back, it's really, really dark. And as you move outward, it gets much lighter. And then you've got a little fold where it has a little darker edge and then it kind of gradually gets lighter too. So as I start in the back, I'm going a little bit slower. I'm trying to achieve a darker color. And then as I continue that circular motion outward, from the pedal I'm going a little bit faster and a little bit faster and a little bit faster until I get to the light area where I kind of just barely burn it at all and it gives it a much lighter look
and then in the fold you can see I'm burnt back to burning a sort of mid-range tone so it looks like the petal is folded over A quick tip, a sand eraser is a great way to remove carbon, especially when you have a piece like this that has some really light areas. If those carbon marks are still showing up, just grab a sand eraser and erase away that carbon. Okay, so let's look at this petal that has a little bit of a lighter tone overall. It's got that nice gradient where it's darker in the back creating a shadow and then as it moves outward, it gets lighter to the point where it has hardly any color at all. So again, I'm going to start in the back and I'm going to, I'm still at a two here on my heat setting and I'm just going to start burning the darker area along the edges of the other petals and creating that darker shade. And I'm going to go slower here so that I get a deeper color. You can see I'm barely moving my tip at all. I'm continuing using that circular motion, but because my heat is a lot is lower, that allows me to go slower and get a deeper shade. And I can just continue to overlap in the same area again and again and again until I get the deepness, um, you know, a deep tonal value. Okay, now I'm gonna start fading outward and you can see I'm starting to speed up a little bit here, going a little bit faster so that I can start fading and creating a gradient. And I like to kind of just burn over the edge of that darker spot and that kind of softens the edge a little bit and then I can kind of create a gradient outward that has a nice fade there's no like harsh lines in my burn at all so I'm just going to continue with my circular motion and I'm going to continue creating this gradient from a darker to a lighter shade all the way out. Okay, and for this last section, we are going to look at this upper left hand corner where the petals are all really light. You can see they have barely have any color or barely any shade at all. So I'm actually gonna turn my heat down to a one here and I'm just kind of barely burning. You can see I'm just kind of outlining some of the edges of the petals and creating shadows behind each petal and maybe burning the edges a little bit just to give it a little bit of a shape and almost just sort of an, an impression that there's a petal there. And even though my heat is really low, I'm going faster here because I don't want to add a lot of depth or too much burn in one area. So I'm keeping a faster pace. So for these super light areas, I'm using all three methods. I've got a low heat, I've got a constant motion, and I am going at a really fast pace in order to achieve a lighter color. So keep going through each petal and using all three tips to complete each one. And at the end, you will have a beautifully shaded piece. You can download this picture below and use it to practice. It is a great shading image to practice with. There's so many uh, variations from deep darks all the way to super light, bright areas. So I highly encourage you to download it and practice below, particularly if you're new to shading. It's gonna give you some really good practice.